understand those with whom we work in our daily lives, be he is, or Ernie, or try to understand another person's viewpoint, to look at things his way. What about you, Bob Stevens? Do you un You seem to be a rookie. In the next few minutes, and how you think in regard to others. Steady, boy. This is a big day. You got your acceptance speech written? Did you think she was asking? Or were you just being big about it? Oh, look, there's nothing saying. Miss Alton could have chosen any one of us on the staff. Even old Ernie here. All right, all right, citizen. This is Ernie Davis, fighting of the Southwest High Banner. Me. Uh, <laughs> you're right. Hey, hey, look what just came in. Somebody closed the door. Now, Bill, that isn't nice. Ben Curtis really surprised me this year. He is, well, I think he's done well on the paper. Don't you? I suppose it's a good thing for a fellow like Ben to get in on a few things. Bill's right. Ben Curtis doesn't belong here. And that corny stuff he writes. Whew. Look at that get-up he's wearing. Weird, to say the least. Well, what can you expect from his kind? As far as I can see, his folks are strictly no good. His father never held a steady job in his life. Just worked long enough to buy a bottle. And his mother. I remember when Mom used to have her come over to the house to do the cleaning. She was a lousy worker. The whole family, stupid, ignorant people. You do kind of wonder why he's on the school paper, though. You'd think he'd feel out of place around people like us. You know, I think you have been all wrong. I know he hasn't got much of a family, but he's a pretty sharp character. Makes doggone good grades, too. <laughs> a lot better than mine. <laughs> And that's something special. Everybody makes better grades than you, Ernie. <laughs> okay, wise guy, I want to tell you something. I have an English class with Ben, and he's nobody's fool. You know, I think the guy has real talent for writing. For writing what? His name, you mean? <laughs> oh. I don't know very much about him. He doesn't talk very much. Here comes Miss Alton. Sit here, Bob. I want to make sure you remember me for the social column. This is it. I'd be a first-class liar if I didn't admit to myself that I'm going to get this job. Who else? Bill? Nah, he doesn't work very hard at any. Betty? But I figure I'm the one. Everybody else thinks so, too. Good afternoon. It looks as if we have a good attendance for our press. First of all, I'd like to make a little statement concerning the of our new editor-in-chief. Since you did ask me to make this selection, I can only assume that you expect... That lets Jim out. He's the personality kid around here. I appreciate your trust in asking me to appoint your editor. It was a difficult decision. How will meet with your approval? Well, to end the suspense, may I introduce the new editor in... Ben Curtis. Ben Curtis? What the... She must be kidding. That screwball? Why, even old Ernie, he'd be ten times better. Ben, will you come up and take over? It's not fair, Bob. That creep. Creep is right. Look at the poor sap. He doesn't know what to do with himself. Brother, how long does he think he'll last? Look at him up there. Does he really think we're going to... Ben Curtis is not the man for the job you think you should have. From your viewpoint, Ben is a... What was it? A creep? A screwball? Are you right, Bob? Is he really such an undesirable person for the job? Do you really understand Ben Curtis? There must be reasons for everything Ben does. Let's go back. Back to the moment when Ben entered the room. Let's look at this incident again, from his viewpoint. Are they laughing at me? I'm sure they make jokes behind my back. They think I'm odd because my clothes are old and worn, and because I have to spend all my spare time working instead of horsing around like they do. My whole life is different from theirs. I couldn't even begin to fit into their group. I wish they did like me. Maybe I could just walk over there and let them know that I want to be friendly. No, I'd better not. 
Why ask for trouble? That Ernie Davis, he'd probably make fun of me. Better stay away from them. Stuck up bunch of snobs. Hi, Ben. Hi. Say, I've got a hunch about you. What? You're gonna be the new editor. Me, editor? Are you kidding? Me, editor. If only it were true. I'd give anything to be editor. Hey, here she comes now. Next year's editor coming up. Good afternoon. Looks as if we have a good attendance for our press club meeting. First of all, I'd like to make a little statement concerning the selection of our new editor-in-chief. Since you did ask me the selection, I can only assume that you expected a selection based on merit and not necessarily on personality. If Bob gets it, I hope he gives me a chance. I'd do anything he asked me to do. It wouldn't have to be a very big job. I appreciate your trust in asking me to appoint your editor. It was a difficult decision. However, I hope my decision will meet with your approval. Well, to end the suspense, May I introduce the new editor-in-chief of the Southwest High Banner, Ben Curtis. Me? Oh, no. Is she making fun of me? No. She's serious. I don't believe it. It, it can't be true. Ben, will you come up and take over? I told you so, Ben. Go to it, boy. What do I do now? I can't get up in front of them. What do I say? What do I do? Let me see. They're sure expecting something. I guess there's no use in saying I'm surprised. You can see that. Keep talking, Ben. Give yourself a chance to think. I want to thank Miss Alton for this opportunity. I'll need all the help I can get from you. I'm open to suggestions on job assignments, so each one can work on the thing you like to do best. Are there any suggestions? Now that we know more about you, Ben, we began to understand you a little better. Why did they see you one way, Ben, and not as you really are? Is it possible that you do not give them enough basis for understanding? If we could see you from still another point of view, perhaps it would become even clearer. Miss Alton evidently sees in you something that many of your classmates do not. Let's go back again, back to the moment when Miss Alton entered the room. Let's look at this incident from her point of view. Well, here we go. This won't be easy. They're not going to like Ben Curtis as their new editor. Perhaps I shouldn't do this. I could still pick Bob Stevens or Jim Gardner. That's probably what they expect. Ben, though, is better qualified for the job. He's not only imaginative and writes well, but he's a hard worker and takes his work seriously. His ideas are just what this school paper needs. What a courageous youngster he is. With his background, it's amazing. The trouble with Ben is that he needs to join in more than he does. He has to let others know him, as I know him. If I do appoint him as editor, perhaps the job will make him do these very things. And it would definitely do something for the paper. That I know. Good afternoon. It looks as if we have a good attendance for our press club meeting. Still time to change your mind. No, I've made my decision. First of all, I'd like to make a little statement concerning the selection of our new editor-in-chief. Since you did ask me to make the selection, I can only assume that you expected a selection based on merit and not necessarily on personality. Look at them, all looking at Bob Stevens. He probably thinks he's got it. I appreciate your trust in asking me to appoint your editor. It was a difficult decision. Should I go through with it? Of course, I must. However, I hope my decision will meet with your approval. Well, to end the suspense, may I introduce the new editor-in-chief of the Southwest High Banner, Ben Curtis. There, I've done it. They don't seem to believe me. Even Ben, he doesn't believe it either. Why should he? Probably the first good break he ever had. Ben, will you come up and take over? Come on up and show them. You've got what it takes, but they don't know that yet. I wonder, though, are they too set against you because you're different? 
If only you'll meet them halfway, so they'll really get to know you. There are many people like Ben, people with problems, people that we reject and ignore because we don't understand why they act as they do, and because they're different from our idea of friends. It's hard for the soft-spoken to understand the loudmouth. It's difficult to understand the shy if you're aggressive. Those who are physically attractive cannot always appreciate the loneliness of those who are not. What about the viewpoint of Bob and his friends? How can they reconcile their present attitude toward Ben with the fact that he will be the new head man of the staff? What should they do? And Ben, how realistic has he been in his attitude toward the others? What should he do to increase his chances of succeeding in his new job? What about Miss Alton? Do you think she did the right thing? What do you think?